How's it going guys? Welcome back. Clint here with Classic Firearms and we've got Matt back today. What's up everyone? And guys, we've got some pretty historical firearms behind us. Behind us? What am I talking about? In front of us here. And uh, we've got ourselves some Swiss revolvers, some Swiss Lugers. Majority Swiss Lugers. Well, they're all Swiss Lugers, but yeah. they're all Swiss, Swiss Lugers. <laughs> Understood. Well, very cool. And uh, without further ado, guys, we want to show these off and talk about them some. Better yet, we're going to have Matt talk about them. Uh, because you are a plethora of knowledge, and I want to learn about these guns. So let's kick it off with these revolvers. All right. Well, no means an expert, but, you know, I'll do my best here. So uh, what we would like to start off with is the 1882 Ordnance Revolver. So, you know, adopted in 1882. This is before Sam Automatics came around. So, of course, yeah. they adopted a sidearm that was a revolver. Uh, this is chambered in 7.5 Ordnance. So it is interesting that they adopted the same nominal caliber size for the rifles and their handguns, but uh, of course a much different cartridge. Yep. Um, you know, it's a you know double action, single action, uh, actually, and uh, you know it uses a loading gate here on the side, so the the cylinder doesn't swing out like a modern revolver does. Right. You load it here through the back of the cylinder, and. You know, the 1882 model has this very distinctive octagonal barrel. Yeah. Uh, I think that's really handsome. It kind of reminds you of like uh, old Henry rifles or something. Oh yeah. You know, mm. So uh, there is a, uh, a nice Swiss cross on the, the left side of this grip, which is actually really interesting because we've had these only a couple times, but we've had these before and I've always seen them with the wood grip. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a polymer grip on the 1882, but evidently that was a, an option because this one is proof of, of that. Gotcha. So here's the one that has the wood grip on it that I think is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. And of course that octagonal, oct octagonal, octagonal, what? one of those words, barrel that you see right here. Words are hard. Yeah, words are hard, man, I tell you. And yeah, dude, really good looking. And then of course compare that to the polymer grip, which has that Swiss shield on it that you mentioned as well. Yeah. Now what's kind of nice about this is that it, it's, uh, you know, kind of rounded. So it, it, it kind of, you know, I, don't know, I think it does fit the hand really good. Yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's most grips nowadays tend to be kind of squared off of it. Yep. Um, but it is really thin, so if you have big hands, you know, it might, might not be the most comfortable gun. <laughs> might be a little hard to hold on to. But I mean, it'd be a great historical piece for your collection. Obviously, 7.5 ordnance isn't something you're going to find every day. Mm -hmm. But you know, it is a extremely cool revolver for those out there who are collecting them. Um, so yeah. Yeah, and man, look at that guy right there too. Talk about a beefy firing pin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so very cool guys, so check those out. And these actually resemble kind of like the Nagant revolver a little mm -hmm. bit. So yeah, Emile Nagant is a, design, a Belgian designer, and he actually had a hand in designing this revolver as well. So is that like Nagant of Mosin Nagant? Right, so the name's uh, for the person. Um, in fact, in Russia, they don't even call it a Mosin Nagant mm -hmm. because there was a contract between Emile Nagant and the Russian government. So Mosin was a Russian officer, but being a government employee, he couldn't actually get any official credit really? for his contributions. Yeah. Um, so they, even though he changed a lot of Nagant's original designs, uh, they just have to call it a, a Nagant. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Uh, so what else do we have here? So this is an updated version of the 1882, the 1882-29, mm -hmm. or the sometimes called 1929 revolver. Uh, so again, 7.5 ordnance. And it's basically just a slightly updated version made it cheaper and easier to manufacture. Gotcha. Okay. So we have that round barrel instead of the octagonal barrel. Um, they have, you know, done some things like reprofile and uh, and using a different texture here on the loading gate. And then we have this nice cool Swiss shield with the cross on it here on the left side that is missing. Uh, it's absent on the earlier model. Gotcha. So that's really cool. I mean, again, it's mechanically basically the same pistol. Uh, same revolver, I should say, but it is, you know, a little bit updated, a little bit more modernized to take better, uh, you know, uh, advantage of the manufacturing techniques available, you know, almost 50 years later. Gotcha. And just noticing again, the slight differences that you guys can see here. So notice the hammer and the, the striker, if you will, the firing pin, how that all looks like it's actually just one piece. Mm -hmm. And then here you can see where there's a pin actually holding in the firing yeah, pin there. there's a removable adjustable firing pin. Yeah. Also, you can just see kind of in the front here of the hammer mm -hmm. where, you know, there's obviously a redesign of some of the springs and yeah. mechanisms in there because you have that extra kind of arm sticking off the front of that uh, that you don't have here on the 29. Right. Yeah, so other just, I guess you could say probably improvements in technology and cost saving. But still a fixed cylinder that's loaded through a loading gate on the back. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. interesting for sure.
Now, of course, these were prior to, like you mentioned, semi-auto pistols, which is what we're moving into now, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Cool, so let's talk about some Lugers. Now, of course, you guys have seen videos of our Lugers that we've had before, and we want to show you guys what to expect with this batch. Absolutely. So this batch has quite a lot of kind of mixed options in it. So we yeah. wanted to give you guys a little bit of a, an overview of each option that you might find on the website. Um, so that's why there's, there's so many on the table. Um, we're going to start here in front of me. So these are the 1906-29 model Swiss Luger. So what that means is, of course, you're going to have that Bakelite grip. You're going to have the Swiss shield on top. All of these pistols were made by Waffenfabrik Bern in Switzerland. Gotcha. And, you know, so these are 7.5 Luger or, uh, you know, 30 caliber Luger. Yeah. Um, and so there are an option for a P-Mark or not a P-Mark. Mm -hmm. And you remember what we talked about with the P-Marks before? Uh, as far as I was personally owned by somebody? That's right. Okay, all right, yeah. <laughs> For a second I was like, was this a test? Because <laughs> yes. So yeah, you know, there's that history of uh, Swiss military officers and, and soldiers yeah. taking home firearms and then they would be struck with a P. Yeah, which so, is super cool. In this case, it's gonna be hard to pick up on camera, but there's a P here marked on the side of the frame, but you know, that's an indication that this was personally owned by one service member. Uh, so we have a couple here. Uh, I just try to get a, you know more than one so you can kind of see the difference in possible some wear. Also, uh, sometimes they'll have more black grips versus mm -hmm. sometimes it's more brown. But uh, you know these are mechanically identical pistols. In this case, the P mark was here. It's on the kind of trigger guard. So there you go. I mean that's your two P mark options. Next two pistols, exact same model but without a P mark. Again, just wanted a couple examples so you can see the difference in wear as well as difference in, in grips kind of cosmetically. Right. Yep. And there they are there. Talk about iconic firearms too, man. Yeah, I mean, movie classic yeah. and like just cultural icon, that unique toggle lock system of, of mm -hmm. operation. Yeah. Um, each pistol will come with one magazine. So, yep. you know, they're, uh, you know, unfortunately those magazines are pretty rare, but, you know, it's, it's still something you can go out and find you know, uh, 30 caliber Luger ammo, and you could go out and enjoy this and shoot it yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Very cool guns. And then we've got a couple others over here. I guess we got all sorts of different variants happening here. So, yep. so we're gonna move up to the top of the table here, or okay. top from your perspective. Yeah. Us. Um, so these are all also uh, 1906 29 Lugers, but these are kind of all one off. So we okay. want to be able to call them out specifically. So in this one, uh, there's just a kind of very, very noticeable amount of wear in this grip. So we wanted to call attention to that specifically. This will be listed independently as an option. Uh, the serial number on this pistol is 64348. Okay. So you will have an option specifically for that one because of that cosmetic blemish, I yeah. guess you'd say. Obviously not gonna affect the function of it at all. Right. But we didn't want someone to uns to surprisingly get this yeah. pistol not knowing what they were gonna get. Gotcha, let me just see it really quick because it looks like that right there is just right where somebody might be gripping the pistol. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So, hey, if actually somebody puts some work in with it, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next two are very interesting because Switzerland, again, that citizen yeah. you know, shooting ability is, is celebrated and so they have regional shooting festivals. Oh, Cantono, yeah. uh, Canton is kind of like their states, I think. Yes. Um, so Some of the K31s that we got in had the competition marks on them. Yes. That is just too cool. So this pistol has a, a shoots and fest yeah. uh, shooting festival sticker here on the side. Okay, that's pretty sweet too. Definitely like that. So it's pretty cool when you can actually hold this, somebody used this as their competition pistol. That's right. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's most likely a pretty accurate gun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you have to you have to imagine that if you were confident enough to to compete with it, yeah. that uh, it has to be in pretty good mechanical shape, pretty good accurate. Yeah, I would say so for sure. And of course it does have that P stamping on the right hand side, which I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and show you guys now, just right above and in front of the trigger guard, right over here. So it is a P marked, competition marked Swiss Luger. And if you want to go ahead and read the serial number on that one. Yep, 52903. All right. And there it is right there. And you got your Swiss shield that is also pretty pretty easy to see. Yeah. So that'll be the one with the red shoots and fest uh, sticker. Uh, this bear, uh, this pistol similarly has a, a tag. I don't know, it's not right. really stay the same kind of sticker. It's uh, rolled around the barrel. Um, and so this is for a shoots and fest in 1958. Oh, wow, nice. So this has you know, been used 
while ago anyway, yeah. at the shooting festival. Um, this one's serial number 71632. So again, because of that tag on the barrel, we wanted to show you this option specifically. Um, I think this one actually is in really great shape. I don't believe we found a P on this one. Just taking a look at it. Yeah. Um, it does say P59 on this side, but I think that's more like some uh, other designation as opposed to the normal P mark. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, so this will also be an individual option for your purchase. Sweet. And lastly, we had a very, very small number of the pistols come with these those beautiful so, terracotta style. Terracotta yeah, red. I think that's what Ryan liked to call it, terracotta. <laughs> um, but these are, you know, uh, these these red or terracotta grips are, yeah. are very rare. We, we, you know, we get shipments where there's none of them. When we do see them, we might see one or two. Yeah. And so there will be an option if you want to go for these really beautiful grips. Um, and this, uh, I'm not going to read the show number because this is just an example. We have, we have a small number, mm -hmm. but this isn't unique. So you won't be selecting this by individual serial number. Gotcha. Um, but finally, we can move over to our last uh, two groups of pistols here. Okay. So these are the 1906 24 pistols. Yep. And we have them separated by manufacturer. Okay. Because back at the beginning of the video, you mentioned not all of these pistols are Swiss. Yeah. Well, so we have two options for you. We have the DWM manufactured pistols from Germany. Now, these were made under contract for the Swiss government, so they're still Swiss Lugers. Right. But manufactured in Germany. And then the Waffenfabrik Bern manufactured pistols made in Switzerland. Oh, very cool. Now, an interesting kind of fact between these two groups of pistols is that, um, as far as we can tell, all of the Waffen from Reburn manufactured pistols mm -hmm. were P-marked, and none of the DWM pistols were P-marked. Gotcha, okay. Yeah, so that one is clearly P-marked right behind the barrel here, that you can tell. And then even has a Swiss, little tiny Swiss cross opposite of the P-mark too. Pretty cool. And I love the, uh, the very kind of interesting the calligraphy style oh, yeah. of DWM. It's beautiful. And yeah. then that Swiss shield is just really ornate. Yeah. Um, so I really love the, the markings on these DWM pistols. Um, again, since we're, these are now the 1906-24 pistols, they'll have wood grips instead of Bakelite, and there'll be small other differences like the texture on the safety lever, knurling on the toggle for the toggle lock, yep. things like that. Yeah. And this one, though it looks dark, is not plastic or Bakelite, it is wood. Right. So again, you know, wanting to have more than one example so you can see some of that variation. These are wood, they're just much darker. Yeah. Super cool, man. Love these historic firearms that we get in, especially the Lugers, because, well, they're works of art. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And how could you not like them, for sure. So that's what we have this time around, guys. And because, well, We've been having fun doing this. Out of all of the guns that we've talked about here today, or at least all the Lugers, let's let's narrow it down to the Lugers because mm -hmm. this might take a minute. Which one's been your favorite? So, I think last time we did this, I chose a DWM 1906-24. Uh, yeah. Because, I mean, you gotta love those markings, you gotta love the history of a little bit older pistol. Right. But, yeah. I have to say, um, you know, just change it up a little bit today because these the spread grip yeah. is where it's at. Yeah, like, that that's is beautiful. so cool looking. Yeah. And as far as our example pistol here, um, you know, it's bluing is really nice and, and even. It's not really got any specific places where it's worn more heavily. Um, and with those grips on it, I think this is gonna be my pick. Sweet, man. Since that's your pick, we do wanna read the serial number off of that guy. Absolutely. So, yeah, for, so it will be set up as a custom option. And if you guys wanna go ahead and pick out or purchase Matt's pick, it'll be this gun. It'll be 54665, so. 54665. Very cool. Now me, because I'm a weirdo and I like all the custom stuff that's out there, I guess. This guy here that has that competition mark on it right here, and again, this one's got a little bit of wear on it. You can definitely tell that this guy used his gun, which I think is super cool. And uh, I'm going to say this is my pick. And you mentioned before that this one's already going to have it listed, but it's 52903. You and you'll see that beautiful Swiss shield right on the toggle lock. And ultimately a beautiful gun with that. I don't know. I think that's pretty cool. Absolutely. I love that. Yep. So that right there will be set up as custom options for you guys if that's what you're looking to have. And of course, you're getting that pretty much uh, hand select right on camera there if that's what you're looking for. And of course, maybe you don't want this one and you don't like it at all. Well, just let me know and don't buy it, I guess. I'm, no, I'm just kidding. I think uh, I don't think these will be have a problem going, that's for sure. So you guys definitely go ahead, check out these Lugers. But wait, we uh, forgot something. Yeah. A little bit. You guys may have noticed some uh, holsters on that side of the table. 
And uh, we realized after shooting the video, now we that we've got the table, talk about them. yeah, now that the table's all clean, we can show off a few of them. Yeah. Anyway, we got some Luger holsters. Matt, take it away. So when we got these Luger holsters in, you know, we had uh, about half a dozen or so holsters laying on top of them. And uh, so we're going to do something we haven't really had a chance to do before, which is offer you an option to add a Luger holster to your purchase. Um, there was no way for us to mix and pick and match one holster with any particular pistol. So we're just going to give you the option. If you'd like to buy a holster, you have that option now. Right, exactly. And these are for the Lugers. These will not fit the Swiss revolvers that we showed earlier. It's just not made for that. Yep. So we only have a very small number of these, like I said, about half a dozen or so. So you're not, every pistol can't get a, a holster, but if you, know, you jump on there fast enough, you have your uh, your chance to pick one up. They are random, luck of the draw. Uh, we put a couple out here so you can kind of see the condition. Uh, you can see they come from almost kind of new, like very little wear, to much more well-loved. Yep, you my know? favorite. Yep. So uh, also not all of them are guaranteed to have a lanyard. Yep. Gotcha, and also too, the ones that we have here on the table show that extra magazine pouch. Do all of them have that or that's not good? No, that's right. a good point. There mm -hmm. are some that uh, we probably should have gotten an example of that uh, will have a, a different style. So there are older styles, gotcha. newer styles. Um, it's again, it, any luck original Swiss Luger holster, but it's luck of the draw. Got it, understood. Well, cool guys, just wanted to throw that in there. And since we're here to talk about it anyway, uh, or just go ahead and close out this video, go ahead head over to classicfirearms.com and get your entries in for our current giveaway, which is the double AR-15 Gilboa that you see right here with the Hartman optic and the grip knife. And if you don't have any idea as to what I'm talking about, obviously you're not subscribed or notified or subscribed or getting the notifications to our videos and you might want to go ahead and hit that little bell and do that. But what I'm talking about again is our current giveaway. Go check out Alec and I's video on it. It's pretty entertaining and it got kind of weird. Just <laughs> just go watch it. Leave a comment about what you thought or don't. I don't know if I want to read these. But anyway, check out the Swiss Lugers. Check out the Swiss Revolvers, the holsters. Matt, anything else? Uh, no, I think that's pretty much covered it. I think we got it. Get your entries in for the Gilboa. And as always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at ClassicFirearms.com.